Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Paper Crafting Saturday. I'm Leslie Watkins. Today I've got a um, a project that I'm still working on. I'm not even sure how this is going to turn out yet. I'm just in the middle of designing it and I'm using the Blessings of Home bundle and this is a stamp set from the brand new catalog that just came out and if you do not have a catalog please let me know. Go to dandeliancottagedesign.com and get on the mailing list for notes and you will find out how you can get your own catalog and your celebration brochure and a lot of other stuff as well but um, you really want to see this new catalog there's a lot of really fun things in it including this bundle which includes these beautiful floral bouquets a number of sentiments and these kind of fabulous dies, and this is what I want to play with today. So um, you have two framelits that are designed to cut out the main shapes here, but in addition to those framelits, you have a whole lot of uh, swags and sprigs, some berries, and um, with varying degrees of complexity and they're they're very lacy so I did go ahead and cut those out using the gold foil because I just wanted to get a good look at them and I'll share that with you zoom you in a little bit there you go so this I ran this through the cut and emboss machine a, a few times so I could get multiples of these different things this of course is the is the longest one very pretty and then you have let me get my pointer so I can pick these up you have these beautiful very delicate leafy designs you have this one that has these cutouts, so it looks very lacy, very pretty. More florals, some, some little kind of dingbats, some additional flowers that you can use to decorate your garland. And look at these teensy tiny, delicate little berries. I mean, so you can see just how fine the detail is on these. I wouldn't want to have to cut out hundreds of these in one go for multiple projects because they are very fine and you do have to take your time as you cut them all out. But I think it's well worth the effort because I think that these things are going to be wonderful on the sides of a box and so that's what I'm going to make today I'm going to show you how I would get started designing a box but really want it, what I want to do is, is play with all these things so let me show you what I have started for you I'm just checking to make sure I'm connected here and I see I am and there's people out there. Hi Kelly and there's Becky and Jane. Good morning Jane. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see everybody out there. With the blessing, Blessings of Home Suite you also get a collection of DSP and so this is called Heart and Home. These are 12 by 12 double-sided sheets of decorative papers and I selected this beautiful kind of a leafy design and this is on a garden green background 
And so I've gone ahead and I've cut out my box in garden green cardstock. I also have a piece of the shimmery white paper. And I have a piece of gold foil that um, we, I may or may not use. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if I'm going to get to the lid of the box. I'm really kind of focused on the sides right now. So what I have in mind is to use these, these garlands on the sides of the box like that. And I think that that looks so pretty just the, the gold on the green. But I'm, I'm going to grab, let me get a piece of the thick, very vanilla. And I'm using thick because I want to add strength to the sides of my box. And I think what I want to do is just have the, the green be a little border and then have the gold on top of the very vanilla. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. And I'm going to trim these down, the very big, very <laughs> vanilla panels so that they're a quarter inch smaller than the sides of the box. So um, the dimension of the box is five and a half and the sides are one and a half. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these at one and a half. Oh no, I want to do it a quarter inch smaller, so one and a quarter. You all picked up on that, right? You were saying no. There we go. All right, so one and a quarter. Oops. One and a quarter. And... Five and a quarter, and I'm just going to take a quick look and see how I feel about that. That's perfect, okay. Okay, I think that'll work. And then the side pieces are going to be three and a quarter. All right. And then, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to need this, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut this the same. Okay, there we go. And, um, Yeah, I'll save this for later. I'm not sure if I'm going to need that or not. All right, now because these pieces are so fine, I've actually gotten my fine tip glue out. Okay, so this is the fine tip glue pen. And... It has a very long and pointy nozzle. 
okay with a with a little tip on the end I'm not sure if there, you can see it there okay and then the cap of course has that needle that you can stick into the center of your nozzle to make sure that it doesn't clog up okay and um, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing on all these little things to my side panels and my head might get in the way for this because I might have to really le lean in to see what I'm doing. I'm definitely going to be using my tweezers. Hi Andy, San <laughs> Abby and Sandra. I combined your names there for a minute. Ooh, the glue's coming out fast. Okay. I'm just going to get a little scrap of paper and I'm just going to push that around. It's a little bit warm in here right now, so the, the glue is, is running very freely. So all, all I want to do is get the tiniest little drop of glue on all these little tiny places. Fortunately, I've only had one cup of coffee so far today. <laughs> so I still have some control over my hands. Okay, so there's that. I'm just going to place this, get this centered. So pretty. I was watching a program on TV about a chateau in France from the 17th century that was decorated just unbelievably beautifully. Maybe, maybe that idea of all this gilding is what's inspiring me today. All right, so there's my first one. I'm going to keep going. And I think I got them all. And then for my side panels, I have a couple of different ones to select from. So there are the very lacy ones and the more filled in ones. Look something like that. There's also this longer one that has a little bit of flower on it, I think I'll use that because that's going to uh, coordinate better with the front panel. But any, any of these would be fantastic. You can definitely use those for an embellishment on the lid as well. 
All right, so I'm going to use those two. And the same thing. Anybody out there get snow the last couple of days? We got a little bit here, but nothing like they did in the southern part of the state, which is unusual because usually where the where I'm located is the first place to get snow. So we got off easy this time. Not a lot of shoveling to do, but I know a lot of people out there. Lost power. Okay. Now I see a number of you on here today who are in the Watercolor Card Club. And if you attended our Zoom meeting last night, you saw a preview of the January subject, which is a floral bouquet that you can use the image from the stamp set to replicate and there's still time to sign up for January's watercolor card club you have until the 9th which I think is tomorrow and I'll give you a quick sneak peek of what we did so here's the the picture I painted and I went into uh, detail as to how I painted this starting from the very beginning with all the tools and the materials and building it up until I, I got this pretty watercolor image. And this is something that could be used to decorate the lid of this box, which um, I'm thinking I might want to do something like that, but instead of on the Fluid 100 paper, I think I'm going to use the Shimmer paper and uh, add a little bit of gold embossing. So that may be a different program than today's because I don't think you all want to spend the entire day here. Unless, do you? <laughs> do you want to spend the entire day crafting? Let me know. Maybe, maybe I'll schedule a nice long one for a Saturday afternoon. Tell me how long you think you could stand watching the uh, watching me create something. What's your, what's your tolerance level? All right, so there are my very beautiful, very decorative side pieces. Okay, very pretty. And I'm going to save these for later. I'll probably use them. Hi, Kelly, Vicki. All right, so this, this may or may not be used. We'll get back to that. Let's get our, let's get our panels on the box. I'm going to go ahead and fold on the score lines and get my box ready to assemble, but I'm not going to assemble it just yet. I'm going to wait until after I get my panels glued on. And I'm just uh, finger folding the box. I don't want to burnish it to make it too floppy. I want it to hold its shape a little bit. So the box is going to come together like this. It's a hinged box. All right, and then these side 
pieces will be tucked inside as well as this front flap. So all of that's going to go on the on the inside of the box. Giving me a shape like that. Okay. So let's pick a piece for the for the front. And I'm going to go ahead and put my top back on my fine tip glue and I'm going to switch to my liquid glue now. For those of you who are just joining in, I'm using the Blessings of Home bundle that comes with these beautiful decorative dies that have me inspired to make a box using the, using the die cuts to decorate the sides. All right, so that's my front. This will be my back. And make sure I get this going the right way. my side piece okay, let me get that running out of glue uh oh might have to get another glue bottle We'll squeeze every every drop we can out of this. Okay. All right, now I'm just going to give that a good burnishing. going to start with my back of the box flaps. And as always, pay attention to the corner. Make sure that that lines up nicely. I'm just going to hold that for a moment for the glue to set. Do the other one.
press that down. Okay. In front. Check the corner. Look at this other one. Okay, now I want to make a little adjustment to my side flaps and give them more of an acute angle so that they slide in nicely. Okay, so that looks really pretty. Beautiful. Okay, and then I have some decisions to make. So I'm thinking I want to do something like that. So I'm going to trim this down another quarter of an inch so that there's a nice reveal. Doing a little clean up here. Oh, this glue is down to the last bit. Okay, now I'm gluing the cardstock onto the gold foil. So it's going to take a little bit longer for it to dry. I'm just going to set this aside where it won't get bumped so it stays nice and straight. And give that a moment to set up. All right. I'm not going to put that on yet because I have to figure out how I want to decorate it. But that is the basis for this box. I want to do one more thing to the box itself, and that is I want to line it. So I've got that beautiful DSP. And what I want to do here, oops, sorry, I bumped my head on the camera. What I want to do here is I want to create a lining for the box that actually comes up the sides. So I'm going to, first I'm going to cut this at eight and a half. All right, 
right, so we measure that's five and a half plus three is eight and a half, and then this is three and a half plus three is going to be six and a half. Is that, is that right? Three and a half. Three and a half four, five, six and a half, okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead score this and what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to, I'm just to uh, finesse this a little bit, I'm going to remove a sliver. Okay, so I'm talking about maybe, maybe a 32nd to a 16th of an inch. I'm just going to remove a tiny little sliver off of two sides to um, decrease the amount of bulk that I'll have because I don't want the edges to poke up. So let's see if that's enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and score all the sides. Actually, I'm going to do it on this side at one and a half. All around. Fold this so you can see it better. And I'm just going to trim the four corners off right on the score line. A little hard to see. I like this this leafy paper. It reminds me of a kind of a, a William Morris design, which I really like very much. Save these little bits. Okay, let's see how that fits. That's perfect. So you see that little that little extra bit that I removed is just enough to keep that nestled down inside the box. So I'm very happy with that. I'm going to take that back out again, and I'm only going to put glue on the bottom at first. I'm just going to go. around the perimeter, a little bit in the middle. Slip that back inside carefully. 
I want to make sure I get all of those corners seated properly. And I'm going to use a block. burnish that down. So not only does the the lining look beautiful, but it also gives the box a lot more stability. It, it strengthens the, the bottom and the sides of the box as well. So I like to I like my boxes to be beefy. They're meant to be kept as keepsakes and uh, so I want them to hold up over time. And now I'm just going to do my long sides first and I think I'm going to have to get a new glue so excuse me while I grab another bottle. Keep these little strips handy so I can push the glue around. And my side panels or pieces. extra glue out of there. Okay, so there is my beautiful lining in the box looks very pretty. It feels very solid. Okay. And I'm going to use this as the base for my decoration on the top. And I'm going to add another panel to the bottom of Garden Green, just slightly smaller than this one to add a little more stability. And I'm also going to put a piece of this DSP on the lid as well and I may have a little label in here with a with a design or a message. So before before I add the bottom piece to the box I'm going to sandwich a ribbon in between there to act as a closure and as for the lid of the box I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is do a watercolor, but this time I'm going to use the 
shimmery white paper instead of the um, watercolor 100 paper. Or not. I'm not sure. Actually, I like the way the um, Fluid 100 watercolor paper looks better with the very vanilla. So maybe I'll just cut this out. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to go ahead and cut this out using that framelit. Okay, and um, and then decorate it. Before I do that, I'm going to decorate it with a little bit of gold. So I will show you the finished box in the thumbnail after the after the box is done and the video is up and you'll be able to see that. But really what I wanted to share with you today are these beautiful garlands that come with this Blessings of, of Home bundle from the new catalog. So I hope that gave you some ideas. I hope you're inspired. I do have a box making course that has instructions on how to make a lot of different boxes and you can learn more about that in my um, from my website and also when you subscribe to notes from dandelioncottage.com and I will also have information about how you can sign up for the watercolor card club for this month where I show you how I painted this image from the Blessings of Home stamp set. So if you're interested in any of those things, please sign up for the um, newsletter, which is called Notes from Dandelion Cottage. Stay well, stay happy, and stay creative, and I will see you next time.